Welcome, welcome. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can get local control of your August or Yale Smart Lock and Home Assistant without having to own any Apple products. If that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jeff from Fast How To. Well, for now anyway, I'm looking for a better name for the channel since this one doesn't show up so great in YouTube search results. If you've got a great idea for a new channel name, let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the list. If I pick your idea, I'll send you some great smart home gear. Well, as long as you live in the US anyway. Sorry, shipping costs, export restrictions, different power requirements, yada, yada, yada. Now, for you longtime viewers, you may recall that I made a couple of videos about the August smart locks that I have, specifically the fourth gen Wi-Fi locks. I really like these since from the outside of the house, they don't look like a smart lock, so they don't draw too much attention. And in addition, the mechanism itself is very intuitive for guests. Simply grab the big outer ring and turn it. They're available in black or silver and they're pretty sleek looking. One of the favorite things for the internet to complain about is the Poor battery life. I'll be honest here, batteries are cheap. I do the subscribe and save thing on Amazon, so I always have batteries on hand for all my devices. And whenever I get a notification that something needs new batteries, I just go and change them. If you don't get notifications, I made a video about how to do that too. So check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. I don't keep track of how long the batteries last though. My take on it is that this is the price that we pay to have the conveniences that we want in life right? One of my biggest complaints about these locks was that you couldn't get local control of them. August, or rather Yale, who owns August, in their infinite wisdom, decided that only people who use Apple devices can use HomeKit. Like there's no other way to use HomeKit. We all know better, right? Anyhow, as a result of their shitty decision-making regarding HomeKit, I thought I was pretty well stuck using the cloud integration. So I did. It worked, but A, I hate relying on the cloud, and B, it was slow, very slow. Sometimes it took several minutes to update the state of a lock if it had been manually operated. That drove me nuts. A while back now, when I switched from a Home Assistant Blue to a Nook, Bluetooth got added to my system since the Nook has it built in. That was awesome. My lock was auto-discovered via Bluetooth, and after fighting with it for a while, I'll show you the easy way, I got it added to Home Assistant. But then, I moved the Nook from my office here, where it was during the build, to my mechanical room where my server rack is, and the lock was no longer within range of the built-in Bluetooth adapter in the Nook. I was heartbroken. And so began my journey of looking for Bluetooth proxies. All I kept finding was ESP32 devices, and since I had none of those yet, it seemed confusing and complicated, so I didn't do it. Then, I added an August lock to the back door of my house. There actually wasn't a deadbolt in that door at all, which bothered me, so I bought a kit on Amazon that came with all the necessary hole saws and drill bits and templates and whatever, and I installed one. It was much easier to do than I thought it would be, and only took about an hour start to finish. I'll leave a link in the description of that kit that I used if that's something that you're interested in doing. Anyhow, now I had two locks that were cloud only. Ugh. At some point along this adventure, I had ordered a Rat GDO to make a video about since they were all the rage. And after having the Rat GDO for a couple of months now, I really do like it. Anyhow, Rat GDO is an ESP32 device so that was kind of a sink or swim moment for me there. Once I had done that and saw how easy it was, I figured the Bluetooth proxy stuff couldn't be that bad, so I ordered some M5 stack ESP32s and got to work. If you haven't watched my previous video where I covered how to set that up, I'll leave a link in the description for you since you probably are gonna to wanna to do that. Once I got the ESP32 Bluetooth proxy set up, the first thing I did was to get my locks added back to Home Assistant via Bluetooth. So let's head over to the desk 
and I'll show you how to do that. So in order to set up the Bluetooth correctly, you're going to need to not only have this August integration installed, but you're also going to have to configure auto unlock in the August app. And the reason for that is that Bluetooth requires an offline key in order to use that. And in order to get that key automatically, the auto unlock feature has to be enabled. Uh, if you don't do that, then you have to use a rooted Android device and all kinds of other stuff. There's some articles about it on the forums. It's much more difficult. Trust me, just enable auto unlock, restart Home Assistant, and then you can just click configure and you won't be presented with that. Click submit and you're good to go. So now we've got both locks added to the Yale Access Bluetooth, but we've got a problem now. We've got two backdoor locks. One is from August and one is from Yale. So which is which? Well, the August integration was here first. So that one is going to just have the name backdoor. The other one that we just configured from the Bluetooth integration is going to have an underscore two at the end of it. So that's how you tell them apart. So just make note of the automations that you're using them in. Go ahead and remove the August integration and then clean up your automation so that everything continues to work and clean up your dashboard and everything will be all set. Easy. Hey you, yeah, you watching this video. Are you one of the nine out of 10 people watching my videos and not subscribing? Help me out and click the button, will ya? If you don't wanna, at least go in the comments and tell me why you don't want to so that I know what I need to improve on. Thanks. If you enjoy my content and would like to help support the channel, check me out over on patreon.com. Patrons get access to all sorts of exclusive benefits, such as downloadable code from all my videos, periodic copies of my configuration, automations, and dashboard YAML files, as well as all of my scripts, early access to advertisement-free videos, Discord access, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, and more. Benefits start at just three bucks US per month. Check the description for a link or just scan this QR code right here. To all my current patrons, thank you. Anyhow, now that we got the shameless plugs out of the way, there you have it. It's that easy to add your August or Yale lock to Home Assistant via Bluetooth. Again, if your Home Assistant server doesn't have Bluetooth, check the description for a link to my previous video where I covered how to create and add an ESP32 Bluetooth proxy to Home Assistant. That's what I'm using to control my locks and it works great. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope I was able to accomplish my goal of teaching you how to get local control of your locks. If you have any ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I hope that you enjoy the way that I present content and I hope that you're able to put this information to work to make your smart house even better. I look forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next video. Thanks for watching and until next time, go automate something, will ya?